good morning so last class last sessions we gone through and random uh, randomization techniques so which covers the random uh, uh, randomization in the test vectors so where you looked on the rand uh, rand c cases so and you looked at on uh, how the randomization will be used the randomization function will be used so maybe an a rand dollar random or maybe an u random so uh, with the different uh, probability conditions uh, uh, with using uh, the calling function how the randomization will be works etc 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 so in these sessions we'll look more on the functional coverage so which will be majorly going with uh, to take up how your whole functionality which is defined for an uh, design will be covered uh, uh, at that end so there is a two varieties you can look at on on this coverages one is on an a code coverage where it will be gives out an efficiency so in the uh, your rtl design so the second one is a functional coverage which will be looks more on so the test bench where your test vectors so will be derives and a responses for your designs so said so that so we looks more on the functional coverage at a test bench end and the code coverage at your design code end or rtl design code end so there is a variations how your functional coverage and how so your code coverage needs to be uh, varied so uh, what we need to think so this presentation will define us so what is an a functional coverage how an functional coverage will be taken care so how the functional coverage happens so in a different phases of my verification so uh, and what are all the parameters you are going to look at on on this functional co coverages so to make out this functional coverage to happen in your verification we need to set some of the features so the major features which is going on looking at so the functional coverage to be happen in your verification process maybe a different phases of the verification process so that's why so while defining your um, uh, asset flow or soc flow or vlsa design flow so where and all so we are mentioning it the verification stage 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so in all those stages the functional coverage will be uh, considered so with respect to so their uh, value appearances so the majorly we look on this major features which is covered to be an a applicable uh, to uh, and certain uh, uh, applications so which will makes an significance so appearance on your verification so, so that so we can say so all the values which is defined uh, on this uh, functional coverages so what are all you are considering so maybe uh, uh, an a simple test bench or maybe an going to speak on uh, uh, the clock generation or synchronization techniques or a constraint uh, functional values etc 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 all those significance will be appear in your verification process so that is majorly we look and uh, we look at on on this uh, the significance majorly on an a system very log where uh, you are defining uh, the whole values to be uh, presented uh, for the um, uh, the whole values of the functional coverage will be presented to uh, from your system very log to your design parameters so said so that so our primary goal will be set up now the primary goal is to make you to understand uh, the significance of the functional coverage in verification using an a system very log so uh, we are not looking at the functional coverage only with an a system very log you can do it the functional coverage in a different Um, uh, programming languages also uh, hdl programming languages also maybe using system sees or using a verilog uh, etc 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 but the more effectiveness will be seen 
So, this functional coverage with an a system very log or the system very log makes an a part of analysis on these uh, functional coverages. So, let us initially we will look at on so what is the verification here and then how the verification will be taken to your system very log from that system very log we will define it how the verification and a system very log will be taken as to uh, define or to take up a functional coverage is also. So, what I am referring? I am referring uh, the major website, system very log website. So, you can go with Axelera also, uh, Axelera website also. So, that is also one of the website where so you can look at on more on the functional coverage. So, may may not be at an a conceptual analysis. So, may be at an a programmatic analysis at an a system very log can be looked at on on this axillary manual. So, that is the major one which will be seen. So, the second one. So, this is the best website where you look at on so many queries will be answered on the system very log uh, for a different aspects. Now, I am not looking at only an, an a, uh, um, uh, uh, functional coverage. Maybe I will go with different aspects of the system very log, and I will look at on uh, how it can be answered on this uh, website, asicworld.com website, and 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 also have another one, so which is system very log uh, uh, parameter. So uh, which is that this website is globally uh, looks on. Uh, the wide range of the system very log uh, appearances. So, you can uh, look at on, on this website uh, on an UVM uh, or an a OVM verification. So, depends on your applications you can uh, segregate the uh, this functional coverage on uh, these two aspects on this uh, website also. And also you can look at on uh, the UVM uh, manual, uh, unified verification methodology manual. So, which is the best suited uh, to define your functional coverages. So, at this end, so then the randomization. randomization will not be more looks at on the UVM technique. So, but the functional coverage will be more looks at on on this uh, UVM website. So that you can look at on more on um, the functional coverage on this website. So, I am referring majorly on this book, Crispier, this is a Bible system very log for verification. I think chapter 6 or chapter 7 will be covers fully on uh, the functional coverage. So, that is very good. So, if you are look at on the functional coverage with respect to an UVM, then you can look at on this also the verification methodology manual that is it, the Bergon is written. So, majorly this manual on UVM. So, so that you can refer this also. This is also very good. Uh, manual which will be describes the UVM techniques for an a functional uh, coverages. So, if you want to write an a test benches for the functional coverages, then you can look at on the writing test benches using the system very log by Janik Bergon. So, uh, functional coverages majorly uh, defined and utilized. So, you through your test benches. So, that is why. So, we need to have more analysis on uh, uh, on how to, how to write and test ranges. So, how effectively you can go for uh, uh, implementing the test bench code to your design or how you can derive your test code uh, RTL code uh, to an a test bench level or different aspects of the test, uh, test bench level. So, will be defined. So, in this um, uh, uh, book. Uh, writing test benches using a system very log by Janik uh, Bergeron. Uh, so, this is a very good book uh, on those aspects. We have Padmanabhan also. So, system very log or uh, writing a test bench, effective test benches using uh, that also Padmanabhan also. So, this is also very good book with respect to only writing a test benches, not using a system very log. So, Janik Bergeron has written very good book on writing a test benches in a system very log also. That is also very good. So, what we need to start here? So, we need to go with uh, 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 verification process first. So, once the verification process is defined, so then we will go move on to uh, uh, the 
functional coverage aspects. So, uh, the major factors for the functional coverage uh, uh, will be uh, one second. Close it all. Incorrect. PPT close away to. PPT close away to. Yeah, can get it. So, first initially we will define the verification process, once the verification process is done uh, with respect to that verification process, with respect to the functional appearance of the verification process, we will move on to the functional coverages. So, because the functional coverage uh, is a part and parcel of this verification process, so and it will be defined for all the stages of the verification processes. So, that is why we need to look at on initially, so the verification process. So, uh, then we need to move on to the um, uh, functional coverage. So, that, that is a very good manner how you can make out uh, all these verification process to be happen there. So, what do you mean by an a verification? The verification, so normally uh, look at on how well you are defining. So, there is a difference in the testing and ana verification testing defines us to find the faults so in your design uh, verification is make to to check out your design uh, will be meets the specification or uh, uh, there is an accuracy will be defined between your specification to your design so in all aspects of uh, the spec values. So, that we will call it as an a verification. So, what we look at on? We look at on the design uh, of uh, the RTL design majorly. We look at on so the system design, uh, uh, RTL design as an a system design. So, so, that we are defining the whole thing, um, uh, uh, the verification is to measure this system design as an a, a, as with respect to an aspect values. So, uh, that is the major accurate representation how your specs will be rep, uh, implemented as an a design or how your design will be meet all your spec values. So, so that checking that uh, equivalency checking, so will be called as an a verifications. So, what is the derivative if any deviation will be presented between the system design to an spec or spec to an a system design what, what you would have a design. So, that we call it as an a error or we generally represent it as an a bug. So, <laughs> the bugs normally will be uh, taken care to define uh, the major discrepancies which is presented from the design to an spec or specs to an a design overriding values, missing values, so our um, un, uh, unspecified values are all the bugs which is derived, so from the specs to an a design values. So, the behavior of the device when used uh, out, uh, outside to its uh, um, uh, original uh, purpose uh, will not be an irresponsible uh, values. So, where you look at on majorly uh, majorly on uh, on the uh, aspects of the design to an spec and specs to an design. So, so, that all the bugs, all the deviation, all the discrepancies which is generated or which is going to be generated. So, will be the major behavior which is overridden or which is uh, going outside to your boundaries. So, will be defined as an a, 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 a verification bugs or calling it as an a verification uh, outside uh, verification values. So, now we need to look at on the boundaries which is lie to explain these bugs. Uh, 
uh, how that boundaries will be considered, how these boundaries so will make you to understand uh, your design with respect to an specification. So that will be explains us. So the major responsibility to make your behavior to be presented. So the process of considering this responsibility on a behavior to finding the bugs on these boundaries will be called as an a functional coverage. So that is the major things. So we had a responsibility. So that responsibility needs to be need to carry out your behaviors. So there there will be in some more some more overrideness. So that overrideness itself your box. So that box should be finded out whenever you are going out of your boundaries, which is lies. So that finding or that verification process, that coverage of all your boundaries, so will be called as an a functional coverage values functional coverage values. So to define this verification, so at a different uh, parameters, at a different uh, possibilities of the process. So let us look at on how your verification process is carried, how your verification process is taken care to define those values. So majorly, so the verification uh, process is not an a single stage process. So we have an a n number of stages uh, which is uh, defines us to take up uh, this uh, verification process. So these n stages needs to be executed in concurrently. So that is nothing but parallelly. So otherwise your design cost will be very high. So that is why so we will make the verification so to be happen uh, on all these stages. So in parallels to the design creation process. So it is an iterative process, keep it in mind. Whenever you find a box, whenever you create clear the box, so you need to go back, uh, go, go back and see the verification to be repeatedly done until unless you come out from all the bugs so which is uh, going to be generated. So the box once it is determined, go to the design, correct it, verify it. So and then find the box, still there is a box, then again go to the design, so clear it, so verify it and, and, and make out the box to be cleared, all the box to be cleared. So this process, so needs not to be done, so in a single uh, serial manner, I will design one block and I will do it, afterwards I will go to the next design, I will take up and I will do it. So that is not a possible cases. So it is a wide area where you need to look at on. So we have an n number of blocks. That n number of blocks needs to verify, uh, to be verified in n stages. So that so all the stages and all the blocks so needs to be verified in a uh, not need not to be in any single end. It should be verified in an a multiple end. So that's why so we will make it in a concurrency to be occurred. So on this design creation process uh, for an verification. So that is the major end which will be looks at on. So how these verifications will be done or created to that. So normally we take up the design to an uh, interpretation, interpretation to an uh, creation. So what it uh, looks for us, so you have an uh, spec the spec needs to be represented as an a design. So that design will be goes here normally in uh, our ASIC design or in my SOC design. So that will be goes as an a hardware. So now all the specs what are all I am written, so which will be read by a designer as an a hardware, as an a hardware. So said that, so I will say each hardware is not an the whole system what I am looking at. So it is an a block by block systems in a hierarchical design. So said that I will carry out all my hardware specs to to be defined for an a blocks for an a blocks. So that is what the designer thinks on or designer makes out to define this hardware specification to be looks for an as an a, a, a hierarchical blocks. Once you have a blocks or once you have a designed values, so then you can interpret that through your 
human language descriptions. So, here normally we will utilize an uh, HDL uh, in that. So, normally we will go with an a uh, very log. So, that is a more important way uh, to be uh, defined. So, those uh, values. So, uh, what I am doing? So, the design itself will be represented in an a uh, human language description. So, that representation, so may be using different languages. So, normally in an SOC or ASIC, so we are utilizing the design to be represented as an very log. So, what it will be done? So, it will make an a logic or it will be shows as an a logic. So, which, which can be understand by your machine. So, your logic will be understand by your a machine. So, that is why I will call this logic as an a machine readable form. So, this machine readable form, form so will be created from your HDLs, from your HDLs. So, that is why, so all these designs will be called as an a RTL code. So, what is RTL stands for? RTL stands for, it has an register transfer logic. So, why we want to say it as an a register transfer logic? All my ASIC or an SOC design is used as an a digital blocks. All the digital blocks will be designed using an MLA or an MRA model as an MRA model. So, this MLA and MRA model will be utilized at the output end and a registers. So, that registers are the temporary storage units which is taken as an a feedback element there to hold your values for the next state of input values, next state of input value. So, that is why, so there, there the efficiency will be very high. So, that efficiency what all I am considering will be defined with this RTL code values. So, that is why we have n number of guidelines to specify this modality. So, the, that guidelines will be explains us how to use your HDL to describe uh, your designs. So, or how you want to convert your specs hardware specs into an a design code. So, that itself so will be look set on an, an, an RTL code. So, that is not the things which will be uh, defined to us. So, which will be goes for uh, different aspects uh, to take up uh, and to define those values. So, yet the different levels we have an a different processes to be defined. So, one of the processes is an a block level. So, that block level to an a, 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 a system level or system level to an a block level. In each level, we look set on um, the major discrepancies or the major uh, design overrideness so to be presented. So, said so that we look all my verification to be done from the block level to my system level. So, my system level, uh, my, my subsystem level, my subsystem level to my uh, system level. So, so, that I will build an a hierarchy, that hierarchy will be speaks on how you can able to utilize or how you can able to. So, take up these uh, design levels from the lower level blocks to an higher level systems. So, will be defined so, in the in the uh, in the verification process. So, so, what we look at on? We look at on so majorly at an a block level, what are all the discrepancies which will be found uh, for your boundaries which is defined. So, from the blocks to an a system level or to at the system level again there is a discrepancy which is carried from the block level and defined at that. Uh, system level for its boundaries. So, those are all will be explained uh, uh, in the verification process or the viewer verification itself will be looks on doing that. So, for example, let us take uh, I have an a a p b buses. So, that a b p buses will be defines as how you can take up um, um, uh, these uh, values uh, may be uh, and one end uh, to an another and another end to an uh, another uh, end uh, values. Uh, so, which will be explains us uh, uh, 
uh, in a different ends how you can create a stimulus is because so your discrepancies your boundaries will be defined only through this stimulus so that's why so we need to look at on uh, at all levels of your verification how your data will be carried how 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 your stimulus the input test vectors will be carried to an a, a outer end and from the outer end to an a, a system end so that's why so we will consider that highest level uh, uh, of the signal uh, to an uh, of the entire entire system uh, which is called as an a responses to an a lowest level of the blocks where you look at on the stimulus so that the stimulus which is applied at a block level needs to be carried uh, to an a, 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 at an a highest level or at an a system level to define those uh, values. So, where you, you will be tested these uh, uh, values. Uh, so, so that we, we, we majorly makes out uh, the application uh, on uh, this uh, highest level with the responses where your entire system or the highest system is tested. So, but that uh, at that level the simulation performance is greatly reduced because you tested all the values through that system uh, simulation uh, through their stimulus at a uh, block level. So, that is why so you need to look at on after the block level what to be done and before the block level what to be done. So, that is why our major interest is to create the stimulus and takes up to the higher level uh, as an a response uh, values. So, so that under these conditions, so the applying a stimulus and to getting out with an a responses at a block level to an a system level or top level model. So, we need to look at on what are the types of bugs which is which is presented in the design or which is going to appear in the design of my system. So, that is why, so we make out a major factor uh, in my model creation. So, that model creation is to make us to detect or my verification is to detect to these bugs at the lower level may be at an a block level in modulus created by an a, a, a created by an a, a single design uh, values to an a upper level. So, that is why, so we make out this block level to be as an a creation of the stimulus at an a simulation level. So, I think, so while writing a test bench, so I am going to write a simple test bench here. So, that is test bench will be explains us how you can carry out this block level as an stimulus and consider that as an highest level of the responses at that uh, end for an entire system to be uh, defined or to be taken care uh, to that. So, our major interest is to plan um, in this uh, functional coverage or in this verification process, our major interest is to carry uh, this highest level um, uh, to an a block level. Uh, uh, how you can plan your verification process to that. So, so that you can have a different variety of testing or verification process can be planned over that. So, we have an a directed or a random testing. So, I think uh, we done it in the last session. So, how the randomization will be created? The randomization itself will be defines as the directed values to an a undirected values. The directed values uh, means so, um, how you can apply directly the test vectors? We define two uh, uh, testing over there direct testing and indirect uh, random testing. So, the direct testing will be the randomization principle, indirect testing is an application of the stimulus to your designs. So, so that we look the verification majorly on this randomization that is your directed testing principles. Assertions are the one. So, where you are pushing your stimulus to a particular design with its boundary values. So, uh, we will say it. So, this is a x boundary. So, in this x boundary, so you need to have an n number of values 
to be generated. So, once you touch that boundary through an asserting command, so you need to generate that n response to values. So, what we look at on? So, is it able to generate from that boundary hitting to an a n number of vector to be generated? So, that itself we are defining it as an a assertion values. So, hardware software co verification. So, majorly we look this at an a SOC end, then at an and an ASIC end. So, what it will be looks at on? So, it will be looks at on a separate design process procedures which is defined for an a hardware and an a software. So, while until unless you get out from the block level to an a system level, either an a hardware or an a software will not be integrated. Once it is integrated, so we need to do an a combined verification. So, that is hardware and a software in combination we need to verify. So, that verifications will be done so at this end also. So, what we are checking here? So, we are checking the whole system how it is response to all your specifications which is defined to your system value. So, emulation is another one process of verification. So, maybe uh, you can call it as an a, a, a a rapid prototype uh, valuation. So, where you have an you have designed an a, 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 a semi custom design. So, in the semi custom design we have an a libraries to be utilized, standard cell to be utilized. So, are you are going for an a, a library standard cells. So, that standard cells may may be present or may not be present. You create an a virtual environment of this and use it uh, through an hardware to define your testing or your verification process. So, will be called as an a emulations. It is just it is simply uh, like a defining like an how so your values should be carried from um, uh, from the block level to look at an at an a system level. So, each block what you have designed will be used as some IPs. So, that IPs will be made it to be presented as an a single customized whole system design. So, that is done through this emulation process. So, formal proofs. So, you have an a customized design, you have an a semi customized design. So, both needs to be verified at an a, at an a, a, a different conditional values. So, it is not an a boundary, it is an a conditional values. Maybe you can call it as an a conditional constraints. So, all the constraints what all your looks for. So, is to define a two ends, one is at an a system end, the second one is at an a data path end. So, both needs to be considered. So, let us say I am designing an a processor the processor will have an um, uh, ALU execution unit, a memory and an a data path unit. So, such that my formal proof is to be present uh, uh, or to be verified. So, the constraint which is combinationally presented from the, its ALU or execution unit and an a memory to an a data path values or data path controller to an a system controllers and vice versa also. So, these formal proofs normally explains us. So, to define your logic, uh, your optimized logic or optimizable logic into an a, 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 a verifiable models. So, that verifiable models are used for verification under any one of these constraint values. So, lastly, so we are going with an a, a, a customized design. So, where you can a, majorly verify on your uh, libraries, standard cell libraries. So, that itself we are calling it as an use of verification of IPs. So, again it is depends on, so where you need to stop your design for an IP. So, where you need to consider, so that IP is to be carried out for and further more processes. So, will be uh, explained um, in these uh, cases. So, that itself will be sees us um, to taken up uh, the, IC, uh, the IP verification as a different end for my designs. So, 
on all these aspects. So, either you are doing a directed testing or you are doing an assertion or you are going for an a co-verification, emulation, formal proof, verification of IPs. In all those cases, so TB is the major factor because it is the derivative which is given for this stimulus value. So, so that we need to look at on how you can able to create these test benches. So, so what the test bench is? The test bench is an a, 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 as an a outer boundary code. So, where you look look on to define the correctness or you are look at on to determine the correctness of your DUTs or your UUTs. So, what is that uh, you need to look at on? So, you defined here. So, how the stimulus will be get ridden to generate and box. So, or what box, how the box will be presented to you. So, that itself you are calling or determining through an a process, that process itself will be called as an or uh, making out, so it will be called as an a test benches. So, these test benches, so will be taken care to define its functional values to generate a stimulus. So, we have an a PRNGs as I defined in the last class pseudo random uh, generators. So, which is the one type of generating and stimulus. So, we have an ATPGs. So, advanced version of PRNGs. So, all are all test vectors, so what all I am generating automatically are to be inserted into your design. So, will be defined as this uh, 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 this test bench uh, uh, criteria. So, that is why. So, we need to look at on how you can able to how effectively you can able to generate the stimulus uh, factors. So, once you generated a stimulus, so the test bench will be looks your stimulus to be applied to your DOT. So, the DOT will be collects your data. Uh, I think so uh, in the last class we return uh, and a block diagram where you are defining uh, we are have done a DOT, this is my DOT which is outerly covered through your test benches uh, that is definable through your uh, test benches. This is my test benches. So, here I am generating an stimulus. So, which is applied to your um, DUTs. This is my stimulus what I am taken care. So, and which is generates and a responses from this. So, DUT so, that is your out values, that is what uh, the responses. So, once you apply any stimulus, so there should be any responses. There if there is a response, so then we need to capture these responses. Once you capture these responses, test bench needs to look at on the, uh, the overriding values or you need to check the correctness of the design. So, so that, so generating a stimulus applying a stimulus to your design. So, DOT, so capturing the response from the DOTs and so checking the correctness or finding the bugs uh, in your design for the given stimulus. So, will be explained uh, in an a test bench. So, or the major test bench functionality is this. So, so that you will measure the progress so, it is an iteration process, one iteration. So, it is had an uh, one uh, set of stimulus to be generated, next iteration, next set of stimulus to be generated, etcetera, 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 which measures the progress against the overall verification goals of your designs. So, so, so now we look at on how you can write an a, a simple um, test benches. So, uh, so, let us say I am writing a test bench for an AND gate. So, I will just declare an a module. Let us say, so I am writing in an a very log, the same thing can be adopted to an a system very log also or let us look at on to write in an 
system error log itself. So, I will defining my uh, two inputs. I do not have IOs yet because the test bench what I am created at this end will not have an IOs, right. So, it is have an internal connections, but it is not have an IOs. So, so, that so in the modular architecture, so our module definitions, I do not have any external IOs which is connected. So, I have something logic. So, let us say my inputs are A and a B. So, I will define it as an a logic a, a and a B or if you want furthermore to be uh, more uh, specified, more narrow down uh, data types then logic bit A and a B. Logic is a four state logic, uh, four state uh, variable uh, data type, bit is a two state data type. So, so that so, you can make out from four states to an a two states or two states to a four state value. Similarly, I will define a logic um, y. So, logic a b, so and logic y, logic a b is your input, logic y is your output, logic bit also you can call it. So, now I will call ion module. So, what I am written? So, let us say it says an ion g g. So, I will call it as an A 1, same as your uh, uh, very log. So, instead of reg and a wire, I am defining it as an logic. So, logic is a bidirectional data types. I think already you know it. So, how it will be goes on that. So, I am defining it as an A comma B comma um, uh, Y, what I had. So, you can use dot product also to define or to interconnect your designed module into the test bench. Now, I am cleared with this diagram what we are written. So, I am calling this test bench inside to that I have a DUT, right. I am just interconnected all my IOs to my DUT to a test bench and test bench to a DUT factors. So, now once you call, so now you can apply your test vectors. So, I am just doing through an a manual. I will use an event block initial begin. So, I will give a delay. So, let us say I have an 10 nanoseconds of delay 1 0. So, then I will assign A is equal to 0, B is equal to 0, put an SME colon, put an SME colon. Similarly, after 10 nano another 10 nanoseconds, um, I will have an A is equal to 1, B is equal to 0, etcetera, 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 and I will allow it to run for an 100 nanosecond, uh, sorry, 100 nanosecond, and then I will ask it to either to finish or to stop. So, depending on uh, your uh, values, you can do that and then say end for the initial and then say end module for your module or test bench, simple one. So, it is a simple test bench how I can generate it. So, if you want a clock, so you can use a clock uh, generators over there. So, these are all explaining us to generate the stimulus, you can see there. So, you are just explaining us to generate the stimulus. Once the stimulus is generated in this initial blocks, you are doing a generation of a stimulus. Once your generation of a stimulus is done. So, then you are calling your model, design model, you apply all the stimulus to this, that is what apply stimulus to your DUTs. Once you apply the stimulus to DUTs, your Y will be generated. So, either you can capture it, uh, the responses, the Y is the output variable, so which goes for capturing and responses, so, so that, so we can have uh, the responses to be captured. Uh, that is what uh, we are doing it, the capturing of a response. Once you capture the response, then I will write another one, uh, one uh, either automatically comparing it or to do it uh, with an a manually also. If you are doing with a manually, so then you need to look at on the object file or an a, a simulation file uh, for this uh, overrideness of this uh, design to that. So, that is your checking the correctness. So, so that, so I am measuring all my values through this test benches. So, which is uh, definable uh, to measure the progress against the verification uh, goals. So, what you need to look at on? So, on these testing principles, we need to look at on uh, 
how much the bucks you are going to generate. So, this is the one simple functional verification code what we return, a test bench code what we return. So, what we need to look at on? So, now we need to look at on how much coverage will be happens for that functionalities. So, is it the linearly varying or it is going with an uh, elliptical values or with an uh, randomized u cups etcetera, etcetera, etcetera. So, depending on your applications it will be goes on varies so to us. So, at this end I will check out all my features uh, which is presented functionally is it covered or not. So, as you are moving on to more and more effectiveness your bug rate is goes on decreases uh, uh, goes on decreases as the bug rate is goes on increases also. So, at a test one so let us say I have a one bug and then one uh, design model is very correct. So, next stage, so I have another bug where uh, and another feature is very correct, but so what I will collect, I will correct these two bugs which is uh, generated in my direct testing and I will find it out. So, both are uh, working fine for us or indirectly what I will, I will look at on. So, this is my reference model, so this is my design model, so I will say so, both the reference module to an a design model I will compare it and I will find it out. So, what is the correctness uh, required to make uh, get out from the box values. So, if it is for a one design, so if I have an n number of blocks, n number of blocks will be designed separately or independently and make it available uh, also for that. So, so that so it will be um, uh, goes to explains us may be in inside the test benches or stimulus and a bug or outside the stimulus as an a bug. So, that depends on how it will be taken care of and how it will be considered to define the bug uh, values or to take up uh, the bug values in these directed testing uh, principles. Uh, so, I, I will stop here. So, we will continue in the next session.